Chapter 2. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doth the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them that do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasureth up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respecters of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, behold, Thou art called a Jew, and retest in the law, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast in God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, and hast the form of knowledge and of truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a, a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest the boast of the law, through breaking the law dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Your circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Here in chapter 2, he talks about a number of things, but a lot of it has to do with what was obviously a problem in the Roman churches, the city of Rome churches. And that was people judging one another for things that really didn't make any great difference at all. We know that there was really a judgment on a problem because those people who were the Jews who had converted to Christianity really had the belief that in order that you couldn't just become uh, from a gentile to being a christian first you had to become go from being a gentile to being a fully observant jew and then once you were circumcised once you had lived the laws of sacrifice and all the rest of those jewish laws then you could become a christian and paul was basically telling them guys that isn't the way it is so in verse 1 he says for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judgest doth the same things. And he's trying, the word judge 
in this context doesn't mean make a decision as to between two things, one of which is really good and one of which is really bad. What it means is to unjustly condemn another person because something they are doing, although righteous, is different than what you're doing. That's really the essential nature of what that means. And then he says in verse 3, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things? And you do the same? Then you will escape judgment of God? You think you can judge people and you are not going to be judged? Do you think you will be negative and hostile and condemnatory and predatory on them and everything's going to be fine with you? Verse 5, But after the hardness and impenitent heart, in other words, the unyielding heart, your unyielding heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation and the righteous judgment of God. Who will render to every man his deeds? So God will remember to every man his deeds. The people who are going to be blessed are those who were patient and continued in doing well. But unto them, verse 8, who are contentious, those who do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. So you're going to get what you give. Now in verse 12 is a critical law. For as many as have sinned without the law also shall perish without the law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged in the law. I have seen this thing mangled seven ways to Sunday. What it means is, if you do not have the law of God, in other words, if you grew up in a place where there was no understanding of who God was, who Jesus was, what the laws were, how to live together, then when you died, you would be judged by the laws you had been taught in the culture where you were. And those of us who have lived with the higher law, the law of Jesus Christ, an understanding of service and all the commandments, we are going to be judged by that law. That's exactly what that means. In verse 15, it says, it talks about those who, the, in verse 14, is talking about the Gentiles, which do not have the law. Then verse 15, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts. In other words, if you find somebody who doesn't know the law, but they're still living as well or as people who do have the law, they are going to be rewarded by Heavenly Father better than those people who had the law and didn't live it. That makes sense. They were doing more. And knowest his will, verse 18, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. Interesting. Verse 18, verse 17, I should have go back to there. Behold, thou art called a Jew. In other words, these people he was talking to primarily at this point in time in the, in the epistle were Jews. And makest thy boast of God. Oh, well, I'm a descendant of Abraham. We're wonderful. We are called. We are really blessed. And you know his will. And you approve the things that are more excellent because you are instructed from the law. That's basically what it says. You are instructed from the law. Okay? And are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind. You know what to do. A light to them which are in darkness. Thou, and then verse 21, Thou therefore which teachest another, don't you also teach yourself? You that preach to a man that he should not steal, do thou steal? Thou which sayest a man should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, do you teach people? Do thou commit sacrilege? Do you worship idols? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, do you break the law and dishonor God? Here's the interesting thing. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles. The Gentiles mock the God of the Jews and the Christians because the Jews and the Christians do not live as is written. That's his accusation against them. 